Hello, I'm David Dickinson. On this show, I help people to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be sold before you can say Jack Robinson. This example is a Bobby Dazzler. Sometimes our dealers are careful and cautious. I call it downright mean. How about 25? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> no. no, definitely not. 300. Can you make another No, photo? no, I couldn't do anything. 200. Is there any more? No. Not even an extra 20? No. When you go to auction, hopefully we get you more money there, but it's always a gamble. Now, we're hoping it's going to sell. What do you think? Uh, well, I'd like it to. Yes. 380 pence, 400 pence, 420. Keep going. Come on. 500, 520. Still going, someone's come in just in time. The hammer is going down, pushing the button. It's close. Sold. Today, the show comes to you from Wolverhampton in the West Midlands. Just look at this crowd. They're enjoying themselves already. They're all here for one reason, and one reason only. They want the real deal. Let's head over to Debbie Circle's table first, where Gary's brought in a colourful character with a famous name. Gary, tell me about this Royal Dalton figurine you brought in. I had this uh, probably two or three years ago from um, a dealer, and it came in at a, at a reasonable price, and uh, yeah, I was quite, quite happy with it. So I'm thinking 1940s. 1930s, that I think, sort of period? I, I, I think it's probably 1930s. Mm. Underneath, we've got um, the Royal Dalton mark, and here you've got initials, and that will almost certainly be the person who painted it. Yes. Um, and handwritten across here, the parson's mm. daughter indicates mm. it's an earlier piece, mm. because I think the later ones are not quite so well marked. I mean, we, no. you know it is because yeah. of the shape of the mould. That's it, yes. It's the colour's very nice, isn't it? The colours, uh, I think, is very exceptional, actually. Yeah, the, the, the mixture of colours is yeah, very, very unusual nice. to yeah. have put those colours together, mm. particularly at that time. Mm. You know, the colours are pretty stunning, yeah. aren't they? 10, 15 years ago, mm. she could well have reached between six and eight hundred pounds. But today, I'm not sure that we're going to get anywhere near that. But well, I will put some money on the right, table okay. and it's entirely up to you okay. to say no. So you won't force it on me then? <laughs> no. And you won't force her on me no, either. No, so. no, no. Good. Well, we're in equal ten. understanding. Ten. That's 50, oh, not a 10. Mm. You're colour blind. Yes. 100. 150. 200 pounds in this terrible slump market. Mm. I've checked the American market for these, and uh, there was one going for over 1,000 pounds. Right. So does that mean you're not going to accept less than 1,000? Well, I can see you, you want to get some more money out of that. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to help you. Yes, Are you? Yes. Okay. Two fifty. Mm. I've been trying for about three. Okay. That is leaving a mark up for the dealer. And you're, so, you're so kind. Yeah, I know it's honestly. Yes, yes. Well, how about I say that's my lot? Mm. I think if you, you could push it to three, and you've got an item there that you'll make a lot of money on. Um, I'm, I'm feeling that there's only probably 280 in it, so 250 Do you really think in it. That? Yeah. <laughs> Look, as you winked so nicely, I'm going to go 260, and that's me out. You, re you think that is? That's me out. Okay, I think I'll go for that. You will. <laughs> And what did you pay for it? With I, your I couldn't tell you, you'd burst into tears. Would I? Mm. Go on, tell me. I paid uh, six pounds. No. I don't know why I'm shaking your hand. But you because I've helped you. <laughs> I'm very pleased with the deal. There's a, a profit margin in it for Debbie. Maybe so, but she might struggle to see as good a return as you, Gary. 
If I do, I should be quid in, won't I? But I kind of have my doubts. Time will tell, Debbie. Across the den, Rabina thinks she's got just oh, the thing to ring Stuart Hofgartner's bell. Very nice to meet you, Rabina. But what is it? I brought in what I think are martingales, and I think Stuart will like these because they're right up his street. I love them, actually. I love them, and I'm happy to pay 150 plus for them. That's all very good, but what's a martingale? Tell me what you know about them. I think they're martingales, what the horse, shy horses used to have down the front. Right, the OK. Chest. And they was found in my dad's scrapyard. In your dad's scrapyard? Yeah. The martingale that you're referring to, you're quite right, would have been a strap that a horse, a heavy horse, would wear yeah. down its chest. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't have had these on it. Oh. They would have been used by sheep. They're called rumbler bells. Oh, really? Sometimes known as crotal bells. And they were generally, of this size, would have been individually hung on sheep, on a oh, collar. Yeah. And this would give people an idea where they were on the hills, yeah. we say, on That's the downs. That's interesting. Um, the pattern here is the, like the petals of a daisy or a flower um, is fairly standard in this sort of bell shape. But what's important, the maker's names are on the top. H, S and Co, I believe to be Henry Sears and Co. Yeah. And he was certainly a foundry in the Midlands somewhere. And WB could be um, Whitechapel Bell Foundry. It could yeah. be, and that's in London. So they, they sort of look very similar. A bit mixed up. But they, they got mixed up yeah. later on in life. They're quite possibly early 19th century or yeah. maybe slightly earlier. Because they belong to your father, didn't you want to hang on to them? I mean, no, he doesn't. <laughs> and you didn't want to keep them either. No, no. I've had them for over thirty years. Now. Have you? Yeah. It's getting bored, shall I? Yeah. <laughs> Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. I like these. Don't forget. Do you? One hundred. One hundred and twenty. One hundred and forty quid. Just before you say anything, let me tell you what the independent valuers say and what I think about them. Estimations, they vary. They start round about 150 and go up to 190. Because of the originality, the look of them, the colour, I would have thought these are going to climb up to somewhere around that 190. They may even bring more in an option, but there's a commission to deduct. Yeah. So I'm going to say, Stuart, we would like to see a little bit more. We know you've got to sell them. You've got to make a profit. But this example is a Bobby Dazzler. He's right, of course. He is right. I can put a bit more on the table for you. And I you. do like them. We've got 140 on the table, so let's do 160, 180 pounds. Your last offer? That's my price, yeah. I think 180 is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good offer. Do you have a deal? Yeah, we have a deal. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was surprised by the offer. I didn't really think I'd get that much, but I think that would be nice towards a good holiday. I did like the bells, yes. Yeah. So I did want to buy them and I bought them. Well pleased, yeah. Great stuff. So Rabina is quids in and Stuart is happy as Larry. <laughs> Coming up, Edwina isn't standing for any of David Tupman's nonsense. How about 25 Oh, hours? definitely not. <laughs> no. no, definitely not. And Karen is expecting a telling off. Mm, 40 pounds, Margaret, and I'm waiting for the shouts. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, that is a long, hard look at that 40 pounds. Is she in for an ear bashing? Find out after the break. Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Edwina's brought in a cheroot holder for David Tupman. Are you going to play the sweet little old lady card? Well, I want as much as I can get. <laughs> no, the better. I suppose I've just got to haggle a bit, haven't I? Oh, no, you're not, then. Looking forward to this deal. I hope you don't use this, Edwina. 
Oh, no, I don't. I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's good. Right, what, no. what, what have you brought in? Um, well, it is a cigarette holder, isn't it? So far as I, I know. Think, yeah, probably for cigarillos or yeah, so, small mm, cigars. Mm. Uh, and, and where did you get it from? Well, I've had it off a cousin a long time ago. Let's have a little look at it. It's, it's made of bone. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it's bone because it's got this sort of black speck in. Ivory won't have this sort of little black speck in. So oh, it's I bone. wasn't sure about that, you know. Uh, and it's Japanese. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No, I didn't. No, no it's Japanese. And it's been carved with a lion on. And it's probably yes. 1920s, 1930s when mm. the, everyone would be smoking uh, cheroots and uh, small cigars. It seems to be in very good condition. So, have you an idea about how much you want for this? Well, I'd like as much as ever I can get. And I want to buy it for as little as mm, I possibly can. I know that. Right, mm. OK. I'm going to put a little bit of money on the table and let's mm. see whether we can tempt you. Oh, no, definitely not. No? No. Well, OK, let me go back into my pocket. How about 25 Oh, pounds? definitely not. <laughs> no. No, definitely not. No way. It's quite a lot of money, 25 pounds, I mean. No. No? No. The thing is, I don't think that I can get much more than that for it. No. But you have yes. to do have the option to take yes. it to auction. Yes, I would rather go to auction. Well, you have but, a lovely uh, day. You have yes, a lovely I'm day out. Sure, David. I should enjoy it. You certainly yes. will. Okay, right. thank you very much indeed thank for being here. Thank you very in. much. Well, I thought that was terrible. I did really, but uh, I mean, I don't know what I'll get at auction, but I certainly hope it's a lot more than that. That told you, David. What have you got to say for yourself? I felt very mean offering Edwina only twenty-five pounds. But that's all I value it at, and I, I don't think she's going to do very well at auction with it. Oh, David, don't be so negative. Fortunately, auctioneer Richard Winterton is much more positive. I quite like this item. It's got a bit of detail with it. We've got a punchy 80 to 100. We'll soon see who's going to be full on that one. 50, 50. Let's get over to the auction and find out who's right. We took a gamble. 80 to 100 pounds is the estimation. The reserve is 80 pounds. Yes. Now we're hoping it's going to sell. What do you think? Uh, well, I'd like it to. Yes. But okay. it's a day out anyway. It's That's a day I'm out. <laughs> Edwina's come for a day out. Doesn't matter if it sells or not. <laughs> we're going to enjoy ourselves, Edwina. It's coming up now. Here it is. On this one, we start the bidding at 30 pound. Then 30 pound a bit. There's nothing on my book at all at 35. Hands in the air here. There's quite a lot of people in the room today. They're bidding, the hands are going. At £70, I bid at £70. It's close to the reserve. £80, £80 at the back, £80 a bid, £80 at the back at £80, £80, £80 in the room at £80, all done and sold at £80. So the gavel has just gone down at £80. There is a deduction to make that leaves £65. Yes. Now, I want your reaction to that. Oh, I'm thrilled to bits. Thrilled to bits? Yeah, I am really. Now, what are you going to do, Edwina, with all that dosh? 65 quid? Well, I don't know. I'll probably take your friend for a meal. Friend for a meal? Comes with me. Okay, that sounds very nice indeed. So, Edwina, <laughs> she's come with her friend today. She's waving at us over there. <laughs> They're both going out for a slap up meal with a 65 quid. <sighs> They know how to live around here. That was the real deal. Back in the den is Margaret, Karen Delmeny to about to make it's Margaret's it's day. I've always liked Karen and I was hoping today that I would have Karen because I think she's a lovely woman and she's fair. You've got a fan, Karen. Best not disappoint. Great big lamp. Very retro, could be a lava lamp, could be exciting. We'll have a go. Now, tell me all about it. How did it come to be in your possession? Well, after my husband came out of the army, it was a present of his mother. Okay, unusual present, but yeah, there you go. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> right? It had a lampshade on, but after we moved house, the lampshade got broken. So, is this a treasured family item? Well, he's to my husband but he says he would like to uh... it's time to go yes okay now this just screams retro at me yes um, I think we're talking sort of about 70s Ooh. 80s 
Early 70s. Like Early 70s. 60s, no, yes. Yeah. Okay. Commonly known as a lava lamp. Yes. Um, and the reason that is the description and not the plug ones with the oil is because of this band of very sort of stylized lava esque decoration going around the inside here. And then we've got this thick, dark brown, treacly glaze that comes down here. We call it treacle glaze, going yeah. back from like the 19th century time when, yes. when that was the uh, description for the glaze there. Now I noticed there is actually um, a department store label on the reverse and also their, their little sort of product number label on the top. Yes. So it's all ready to go. Um, it's a question of taste, this lamp, for me. But I have to say, if there's a boom area of dealing at the moment, it's in this amazing retro style. So, money time. Yeah? So, 10, 20, 30. Ooh, 40 pounds, Margaret, and I'm waiting for the shouts. <laughs> oh, that's a, that is a long, hard look at that 40 pounds. It's a bit low. Do we get an opinion? Please, yeah. get David. Yes, okay. Yes. I think David will like it. What do you reckon to this, David? Well, it's big and it's shapely. <laughs> Dare I say any more? It's a great looking thing. Estimation starts from around the 20 up to about 40 pounds from both independent valuers and auctioneers. Yes. It is fairly modern. It is decorative. It makes a statement. It does a job. I'm going to say, I don't think you can get more than £40 at an auction. Carolyn will take that to one of her Bracanti open air fairs. It'll be sold before you can say Jack Robinson. Thank you, David. Who's Jack Robinson? <laughs> See, it's my job to put a fair price. And I feel I've done that. I, I put down £40. Would be prepared to put another £5? No, pounds. I'm not going to put any more money. But I, I honestly think you'd do better at auction. Um, I think that's a fair offer. You don't think you'd do better in auction? Actually, no, because I don't only end up with that anyway. So am I going to be owning this lamp then, yes, Barbara? Yes, you are, yes. yes. <laughs> It'll look lovely in your lamp. I'm just too generous for my own good, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a deal then. You've got a deal, Karen. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very pleased with how the deal went. I've got my £40, which I was hoping to get. I think I got stitched up by uh, Mr. Dickinson then. You don't believe that, do you? He stitched me up then. And he's in trouble for the rest of the day. Watch out, David. Karen's on the warpath. And still to come, can Debbie spot the real thing? £80. No, no. For all that bling. I couldn't get fakes for that. That's real bling. <laughs> Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal in Wolverhampton. A bit of sparkle has turned up on Debbie's table. So, Janet, tell us more. I've brought a set of tanzanite and diamond uh, necklace and earrings. You know, all us ladies like a bit of bling, so maybe I can tempt to that way. Janet, tell me how you came by them. Well, um, I was working on a cruise ship this year, working as a social hostess, and one of the uh, passengers bought me these items as a gift before he left the ship. Gosh, <laughs> you lucky girl. Hello. <laughs> Do you know where he'd bought them from? Did he give you they, any idea? They were bought on, on the actual ship. Well, I was told the Tanzanite uh, was, you know, was particularly a nice stone. That... Well, it's, it's an interesting stone because it has only been found in the 20th century and it's a seam of semi-precious stone that was found in Tanzania, hence Tanzanite. Um, and it's set in precious metals now. One's made of 14 karat gold and one's made of 18 karat gold. They are set with diamonds, but they're tiny. They're what you would refer to as chips. Why have you decided not to keep them? Well, they have no sentimental value to me at all. Right. And so, uh, at this point in my life, I'd like to move them on. Okay. Right, so let's get the money out and Ooh. see how you... <laughs> um, 20, 40, 60, 
80 pounds for your freebies. No, not no. for all that bling. Right. Um, 100 pounds for the bling. No, that's not enough. I couldn't get fakes for that. <laughs> well, it depends where you buy Fake them. Fake bling, that's real bling. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm fascinated, Janet, the generosity of the besotted clients that showered you with all manner of gifts and presents. I know, well, it's just the kind of job I was doing. I was glammed up to the nines, dancing every evening, okay. doing my job, basically. Okay, <laughs> there's various valuations on this. We've got a 250 to 280, that's the lowest one. Then we've got a three to four. Now, I'm going to have to say that 100 pounds is just far too low for what is on the table. I do agree that the 100 is too little, but what I'm going to do is push it up to just above the scrap price. So that's 140 and one more, and that's me out, 150, and that's my final offer. Oh, well, um, thank you very much for your offer, but I think I'd very much like to take my chances in the auction. Yeah, I don't blame you <laughs> at all. Good luck with thank it, you. Janet. Well, it was a little bit low, a bit of a surprise. We'll see if I can take them to auction and double that. I'd be really happy. Is that a tall order? Let's ask our auctioneer, Richard Winterton. A bit struggling in the auctions at the moment, jewellery, so really just going to have to see how we get on. Oh dear, Janet, don't hang up the dancing shoes just yet. But that said, it only takes two bidders to tango. Just show me how you danced with this elderly gentleman. Oh yes, I've got the idea. OK, it's coming up now. Let's see what happens. Is it going to make its money? The reserve is 280 quid. Bit of interest we have on the book. Telephone is up. We are starting at 200. 200 bid. 200 a bid. 200. Interest internet. on the telephones. 260 bid room. 260 bid. 280 bid internet. 280. Bid that's internet. the reserve. It's going up to the reserve. 280 on the internet at 280. 300 telephone. 320 I've bid internet. 320 internet. 320. Telephone is out. 320. 320. Internet at 320. All finished. Sold on the internet, £320. Sold at £320. On the internet, £320. We've got a bit of a deduction to make from that, so I make that about £262. What's your first reaction? Oh, I'm just thrilled, you know, that it, it went a lot more than what I was offered on the deal a day, so, yeah. You were happy? Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. The real deal was here in the sale room, £320, quid, taking home, £262. Real deal. It's just a couple of hundred quid, but I bet that's put a spring in Janet's step. Back in the den, some old classics have turned up on Stuart's table. So, Bernadette, tell us what you've got. Today I've brought some car mascots, and I'm hoping for a fair deal for Stuart and a fair deal for myself. Motoring collectibles are always sought after. Some good, some bad, of course. And I think £100 or so you should buy them. Two mascots, three car badges. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about their history and well, uh, how you acquired them. Yeah, they were my late husband's. Uh, he's always had them as far as I know because we were married for 35 years. And then um, I went into the shed to decorate and there they popped out. I'd forgotten he'd got them actually till then. So did they come from cars that he's owned in the past? Um, I would imagine so, because he was a bit of a car buff, you know, he used to like nice cars. OK, because the IA badges here would have been on what we would term a classic car yes, now. Yes, yeah. So we're talking about 60s, 70s maybe mm -hmm. on these. Um, this is a badge for an associate of the RAC, so Royal yes. Automobile Association. And interesting enough, it's got a Malaya badge on it, so yeah. that's quite special. Yeah, yeah. And I've, got, I've got to say, this one, the condition is against it. It's, yeah. it's made of a funny material. Mm. It doesn't stand up to the weather very well. No. It starts to pit. Yes. And in fact, you've got it on the same on this yes. uh, mascot here. Yes. But this is, I think, the most interesting, personally. Yes. Yeah. And I think it was from a Mark 10 Jag. Yeah. Uh, I think it came out in 1948, 49, and went through the 50s. 
I, I like that one best of all, but conditions down. I know. Uh, those three there are what I'm really looking at. No, it's on your Rolls Royce, though, wouldn't it? Have you seen my Rolls in a car park? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it would look good. Yeah. We'll have a go at buying them, shall we? Okay. 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. How's that grab you? Oh, we have David. Uh, well, I don't know what value you put on these when you came today. Did you think they were worth anything by that? Um, well, I did look at the on the internet for that particular one, yes. and that was quite, you know, collectible. Varied, varied. Okay. Yes, it was. Yeah. Well, the independent values and the auctioneer, they all say the same thing, around about sixty to eighty quid. Mm -hmm. You're sat down with a man who buys this type of merchandise, so I'm going to say to you, it's about the money. The guy's got to make a small oh, profit, and there is only a small profit in it. I would not hesitate to say, as always, Stuart, you're there, mate, with the money. Great offer. Okay. Thank you, David. How do you feel? Yes, Stuart, that's a very fair offer. Thank you very much. We have Please, a deal? With that, yes, we do. Super. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And will I make a profit? Um, I hope so, yes, because I like, I like the Jaguar Master. I always strive to make a profit. And that's what we like to hear. This will be Coming my up, final. is Debbie trying to flirt her way out of this one? Is there any more? No. Not even an extra ten? Look, don't use your gorgeous looks and charm. <laughs> Find out after the break. <laughs> okay. Welcome back. Dickinson's real deal. It's Tom's turn next to sit down with Debbie. But will his collection have her chomping at the bit? I uh, bought a collection of Bezic hunting dogs. I'm looking for three hundred pounds. Learn that mark today. Tom, normally when people bring things on the show, I can kind of understand why they might own them. I just can't see you having these in your room or well i didn't buy them uh, right. um, they're more of an inheritance uh, originally my grandmother's then passed down to my father and then finally on to me and my sister we just don't like them right. <laughs> they're just not <laughs> you're not, you're not going to sell them to me then yeah i'll sell them to go you on but, then go um, on. it's i don't know i can sell them to you it's Bezic, and it's about 1960s and I would think that it would be fair to say that there are quite a few other pieces, particularly on the horse riding yeah, the, front. Yeah, they used to be in this collection until my dad took a football to them when he was younger and no. smashed them to bits. Um, that's where the damage on that one came from. So, so he was a youngster when that youngster happened? Youngster when that happened, yeah. I bet so. he was in trouble. Quite a bit, I imagine. Do you know how many of the riders went missing in that football accident? I, I think there was a fair few, and a fair few dogs yeah. went yeah. with it as well. So okay. uh, it was a larger hunt when they set out. Um, I have had a little look, and this one has suffered quite a considerable amount of damage. It's been off at the base and restuck, and worse still, it's missing, missing. its front foot. Yeah. So it's a shame that we haven't got that yeah. piece. So. We'll kind of ignore that one at the moment. It is restorable, but it's quite an expensive process. What about the little pony, the back leg of the pony? Um, I think that can be one of the football accidents. <laughs> one of the many accidents. <laughs> so that one's got a bit of damage by the look of things. Yeah. And the um, hounds look okay. Yeah, they've. I think they survived. So we've got seven, seven hounds. I think this little hound may well have belonged to another set and the fox looking very laid back despite being chased. Well, I will make you an offer. Right. 50 pounds, Tom. Nowhere near enough. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. I, I agree. Still nowhere near. 100 pounds. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. £150. Still not close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Always popular. Two to three hundred pounds is the overall estimate from both the independent values and the auctioneer. 
150 is low. Mm, I'd agree. I think it just needs a bit more tempting. Um, okay. I'm going to see if I can tempt you, but this will be my final offer. 200, Tom. Is there any more no. you can put to that? Not even an extra 20? No. That. Not even an extra 10? Look, don't use your gorgeous looks and charm. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take it to auction. Take it to, take auction. It to auction? Well, good luck. I thought it was way too low. I'm hoping for at least 250 at auction, uh, maybe more. Let's see if auctioneer Richard Winterton thinks you're pushing your luck. It really is one of those lots that we just don't know where it's going to go. We put two to three hundred. We should get the two hundred plus. Twenty-five, twenty-five. Let's hope 25, the bidders are on the hunt for Beswick. Sold then. Thirty, thirty pound. Tally ho! Let's catch them up, Sarah. We might get a bit more. They're coming up now. The reserve is set at two hundred and thirty. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Just crossing my fingers now. I want to get rid of them. Is it the right decision? Are they going to go to the hunt? Are they going to pay for it? Let's find out. They're coming up now. Mission bids in a minute. 100, 100 bid, 100, 100 bid, 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 200, 200, 220, 220, 220, I'm bid at 220, 220, 220, 220, I'm bid at 220. One more, 220, say no. 220. Dave, we have 210 on the book at 210. 210 is on the book. You have a choice now, a quick choice. If you want to accept it because of the damage, you can say yes or no. Yes or no? Yes. We'll go for Okay, that. sir. On the book, 210. And sold. It didn't make the 230 reserve, but it got up to 210. We've got some commission to take off. I make that £172 after the commission. Happy or disappointed? Uh, a bit disappointed in the price, but happy I came. OK. A little bit disappointed, but allowing for the damage, 210 was not of our price. £172 is going home with Thomas. Tom's gamble to take the Beswick to auction didn't pay off. He should have taken Debbie's £200 cash offer. Never mind. Let's make our way to Karen's table for the final time today. Could this be a case of double trouble? We like Karen. We've seen her a lot on telly as it is, and she's a very fair person. Yeah, absolutely adorable. Yeah. Watch her every day. Love Karen to pieces. Blimey, Karen, you are popular today. But will you still be popular once they've heard what you've got to say? Some coins have arrived. Sovereigns, if they are sovereigns, and I hope they are, are pretty much standard price, but it's always people that come to my table or anyone's table, they always know what they want for them. Is this true, ladies? We want to vote between 425, 454. Let's see if you can get it then. Ladies, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Um, we have. Kim and Barbara. And I'm guessing your sisters, aren't you? Yeah. And yeah. you look like trouble, don't you? She's the worst. She's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what have we got here? Tell me what we've got. We've got two gold sovereigns and a set of two silver sovereigns. Yeah, there was my dad's. My dad used to collect them and he's yeah. passed away now, and we've had them for about eight, nine years. Eight, nine years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Doke. So, why have you come along today? Well, we thought we might as well sell them now. It's you want a bit more gold jewellery, don't you? Yeah. That's what yes. it is. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Put some more money to some more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, if I go into it, we've got the two gold sovereigns at the front here. Uh, 2004 and 2005, am I right? Yeah. yeah. And then we've got the, the four silver coins at the back. And they're what they call proof sets, aren't they? Because they're encased in this plastic to keep them as clean as anything. Yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about the history of sovereigns. It was actually Henry VII in the mid sort of 15th century um, who had the first sovereign issued. Um, and at that point, they represented a pound. But these days, they've obviously got a significant value because of the gold content. Each sovereign, what we call a full sovereign, will be eight grams of gold. And these days, it's 22 karat gold. Um, and Somebody like myself is going to pay a price very much dependent on the value of gold at that time. 
And I'm sure you know it to a penny you two, <laughs> don't you? I can just tell. So who, who's the softest one of the two? Who shall I deal with? Yeah. <laughs> I should just put you, you're closest. <laughs> right, let's put some money on the table. Right, here we go. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. No, worth a bit no. more than Barbara. that. No, it's worth a bit more than that. Yeah. They are? Yeah. yeah. Um, because hopefully that's that credit work called profit, which is what I'm going to get. No, I would love a bit more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What am I up to? 160, 180, 200. Of course, that was for one. I'll carry on for the two now. Yeah. <laughs> right, 200, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300, 320. No, just a bit more. All right, another 20 in the pot. 340 pounds, and then that just leaves me a bit of a profit. Um, what do you reckon? Shall I go? Come back. But you have Can a you... little chat. No, I'm <laughs> squeeze a bit more. No. I'm sure you could do. Right, it's 360, and that is it. Can you make another No, 20? no, I couldn't do anything. That's it then, yeah? Yeah, go on then. Yeah, go on, yeah. Then. Go on then, Karen. Go on then. Shake. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Karen. Thank you. What happened to that £450 you wanted, girls? You don't want to take them back home? No, we no. don't. <laughs> no. We don't want to go to auction either. It was great to sit down with Karen. Absolute pleasure. And the feeling is mutual. They were great, weren't they? Oh, I loved them. Um, yeah, but they were both pretty tough. <laughs> They certainly were, Karen, but that's been the case with all our sellers. They've pushed you dealers to the limit. So, how have you all done? David Tupman's one and only chance to buy anything failed miserably. How about 25 Oh, pounds? definitely not. So Edwina took her cheroot holder to auction and David didn't make a penny. Ooh. Remember Gary, who only paid £6 for his Dalton figurine? He did a grand sales job. He talked Debbie into paying Thanks. 260 quid, and unsurprisingly for her, she's yet to find a buyer. I don't know why I'm shaking your hand. But you because I've helped you. <laughs> Karen hasn't done any better. First, there was Margaret's lava lamp. It's a very long day, Mr. Dickinson. She changed her mind. A very she long day. She knows she's given too much money. <laughs> it certainly wasn't the best 40 quid she's ever spent as she's yet to make any of it back. And her bad luck continued with the sister's sovereigns. I'm just too generous for my own good, am I? <laughs> they squeezed her as far as they could and she paid 360 pounds. And yep, you've guessed it, she's not sold those either. Stuart kept the cash coming and he's come out on top. But only just. He forked out £180 for Abina's five rumbler bells. He's clawed back a hundred quid so far, and he's still got three more to sell. He's done slightly better with the car badges and mascots. I'm hoping for a fair deal for Stuart and a fair deal for myself. Bernadette was happy with the 80 quid and there's no complaints from Stuart as he sold four out of five and made £20. And he's still got one left to go. I always strive to make a profit. That's the idea. But today the dealers have only managed to make a miserable total of £20 between them so far. So it's definitely been a day for our sellers. They've walked away with over £1,100. Nice work. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.